It's midnight on the Gold Coast. It's 2 p.m. in the Kingdom. And you're listening to the Cross League Podcast. Okay. Hello and welcome to the uh, the second edition of the uh, Cross League Podcast. Uh, this is show number two. It's post Christmas. It's post New Year, and uh, more importantly, it's uh, post the Cross League World Cup. And uh, just to sort of give you a taste of what that was like, here are some clips from just at the end of the World Cup. Uh, well, I've got a very happy Des Forty in front of me. I mean, Des, um, at, at risk of I don't want to insult you, but as <laughs> as as you know, the creator, if you like, that probably sounds a bit better than what I was originally thinking of. <laughs> right, I was thinking a grandfather, grandfather of of Cross League, um, you know, um, and you must be the proudest man on earth today. Well, absolutely, yeah. It's uh, like I say, it's uh, it's great to see all these people playing it. A lot of people who I don't know and haven't known in the past, and and to be bringing them on that journey of of playing a good version of rugby league and you know I'm sort of delighted at that and it's like we say it's sort of uh, for me who's had a rugby league background you know born in the sort of heartlands lived up with it but then moved to Ireland uh, it's great to sort of produce something out of there and like the the Irish contingent the lads who come from Ireland did a great job today and made some you know important sort of breaks and tries and stuff and uh, it's just great to have that, um, and, and hopefully we'll keep going and we'll build, we'll build on it from year, year on year. I mean, I certainly hope that it's the start of something. I know yeah. I spoke to you about 18 months ago yes. when we, we had a conversation, and I, I was really buoyed by it, and I thought there's so many other ways that cross league can be used as well, isn't there? Because yes. it can be a coaching. I mean, we saw today, we saw individual skills, we mm. saw communication skills from people who'd only just met each other and yes. they were coming on in abundance weren't they yeah. throughout the afternoon yeah and I think that's the thing it's um, like we said the skills of you know you learn the skills by playing cross league really you know like obviously if you're thrown into a full tackle environment there's a lot of your mind's got to be a bit on self protection whereas in cross league because you're not under that same sort of pressure you can use your skills to to beat people and to play the game you know and that's why we we sort of we stress that that it's a game for people to to learn the game if they were novices in rugby league and get their their rugby league skills up so that when they do if they do want to play at full contact they can and they've got a, a, a big skill bank to draw on that they've they've developed through playing cross league but if they just want to keep playing cross league like myself you know when you when you've sort of passed that age where you're um, able to play contact Everybody misses it. I know I, I miss it. I, I watch games and I'm like, oh God, I wish I was out there. If I got the knocks, I'm, th- I'm sure I'd say, well, what are you talking about? You, you fool. <laughs> you know, that you don't want to be knocked about. But, you you know, still having that chance to experience the sort of, the, the thrill of putting somebody through a gap and somebody, you know, stepping and beating people and all that. It's, uh, you know, it's magnificent. I think you've touched on a more important thing than that, you know, because obviously a, a, a big thing that a lot of people talk about now is, is mental health, about togetherness, about yes. preventing things like social isolation. Mm. Um, so Cross League can fit into that gap of bringing yes. people back to team sport to yeah. get involved in that sort of environment, can't they? Yeah, and I think the uh, the RFL have sort of spotted that and they see it as an opportunity for that. And it, you know, it, I, I just see it that we'll... We'll hopefully we'll grow. We'll get more clubs involved, and the fact that it's a small-sided game, you know, you're not needing a full 15-man squad or whatever. You know, um, you can play with, you could play six aside or five aside if you had to, but people could have that. And I, I know the older mouths. That seems to have been there. You know, that's what's happened to them. They, they they weren't really connected to a club. A few of them connected to different clubs in Oldham, and I know they are keen on pushing the sort of the mental health side of things. And I think they've, it, it, you can see they're excited. Oh, lads, there's a run out tonight, six o'clock in the club, get down there and do it. And I, I you know, I, I see that as a major plus. And it's a, you know, for rugby league to be giving that to people, I, I like to see that. You know, it's a game that I sort of know and love, but I, I like the idea that people benefit from with their mental health 
from going out and have a run about and playing with their friends and that you know that sort of camaraderie and that bit of fun and skills and all that you know that everything that, that's part of it yeah I mean I know that's a more serious side of it isn't it you know yeah. that we, we touched upon there but that, that's just how far reaching that we can get I, isn't it I think it is yeah and, and as much as like you were saying before about uh, physical disability rugby league you know we're I think we're all of us are keen to sort of use rugby league different versions of rugby league to benefit more people rather than it just be almost like a, a, gladita- a gladiatorial spectacle you know obviously we have that with Super League and the NRL and, and the professional game in England but at that sort of lower level and less contact and a bit friendlier <laughs> you know we can uh, we can use the game of rugby league as a, as a you know a community game that sort of everybody enjoys um, I, I, I just want to sort of like ask or ask your thoughts as well because I, I was looking down that England lineup, and there's players that have come in from like West Oxford, yes, and yeah. Brighton, and Hove, and yeah. you know areas that they're not really synonymous with rugby. No, well, so this shows how far this it, version can it, reach. It does, yeah. And and obviously we uh, we want everybody in the Heartlands to play it as well, but we do really see it as a, a sort of a development game. That and, and particularly I'd say Brighton and Hove, they were a new club starting up. Uh, that we're trying to get a team together to play in their Southern Conference or whatever competition they're in at 13 a side. But um, to start with, just to get some interest, they started playing using Cross League as a, a way to get people down on a Saturday. And you know, the thing about Cross League is, whilst you might be developing your 13 a side players as well, you're you're developing that bit of a culture. You know, so people who would never dream of playing the full contact game can still be turning out for your cross league team and can can be part of your club you know so that's it. I guess what we've touched upon is, is, is legacy obviously everybody wants to see legacy from these yes. World Cups yeah. um, and as I say it's been a great delight for, for me to be involved in two of these yes. uh, festivals if you like yes. you know because yes. um, uh, it just opens your eyes to so much more potential because sometimes we can all be a little bit negative and just be very um, <laughs> very club centric of yes. where we've come from yeah. or say the rugby league's not doing this the rugby league's not doing that no, no. but this is about what the rugby league is doing. It is, yeah. And I, I mean, I often see, you know, you see on Facebook, everybody slagging off the RFL. Oh, they've done this wrong, they've done that wrong. And I've only got good things to say about them because, you know, Bradley and, and the rest of them, uh, it, it's been a, it's been great. You know, we couldn't do any of this without their help and they've been really good. Everything we've gone through uh, in the last couple of years, like Mark Lovering was there at the start saying that, you know, there's something that we could do here and then we progressed a bit and Anthony Atherton was involved as well and now Brad's Brad's on with us um, we have a meeting every month and we have a leading up we had lots of meetings um, and it I, the, I I, you know I haven't a bad word for the RFL you know I think they're doing a great job and uh, I'm, I'm glad to be, that we're a part of it uh, and fingers crossed that people will, have, will get to see this footage they'll pick it up and yes. they'll enjoy it yeah I think you know, I find obviously I, when I ever say I say, well, obviously I'm biased. I know, you know, but I can't see that people would have anything wrong to say about it because as long as people are sticking to the rules and playing to the rules, it's a really enjoyable, fun game, you know. And it's it's a version of rugby league that anybody can can play against anybody else. Well, I'm with Deck Five, Deck. You're a world champion, man. <laughs> yeah, I know. How does that sound? And <laughs> how do you reflect on the afternoon that we've had in Sheffield? Well, like, first of all, it's unbelievable. I, I expected we'd do really well. I thought we'd play some good football, but I didn't really expect to win. Uh, but it is fantastic to win. I think um, the games got progressively better as the as the, as the the sort of uh, day went on. Really looking forward to tomorrow where everyone's mixed into their regions. Uh, I thought the referee was, like, got really like fantastic effort in the end to get to control that final I thought the final was the best game by far uh, and I think the other thing is this Ireland squad we've very much thrown together but um, just an instant kind of connection between us and everyone involved and it's been fantastic a great day out you said it's been thrown together how, how much have you did you actually know each <laughs> late, other's names late before coming phone in? calls and, uh, <laughs> and uh, do, you, do you want these guys no, there, so there was there was trials in, in Ireland there was trials in uh, Warrington, where there's a bit of a stronghold there, and then we put the squad together. But we met each other this morning, and it, you know, that, isn't that just a, a testament to how great these guys are? That they we all gelled in. I mean, by the end, 
there's lads from Kerry and there's lads from Warrington and lads from Sheffield all jumping up and down together. We, we met this morning and we're all Irish and we're all winners. It's fantastic. <laughs> Did you have to practice, you know, like the national anthems of the so, winning yeah, song? So, so the, yeah, so the, um, the WhatsApp group included a lot of information about getting their pronunciation right, which actually on the day I, I heard a few things. I, I was like, is that the right? <laughs> but that might have been from me. Well, well, <laughs> you, you might be glad in that case that I didn't mention too many games on the video. Right. right. <laughs> Not too many players on the video, yeah, yeah. Um, but but I know. I mean, like it's. Uh, I, I, I mean, for I know I've spoken to you about cross league in the mm-hmm. past. You know, yeah. like uh, and about the development of it. Obviously, you, you bring a competition like this in, it puts it on another level, doesn't it? Yeah, you get more yeah. people interested yeah. in it. Yeah. Well, I think like uh, you know, just looking around here at the sort of like the setup that we have, like, who wouldn't want to play on a pitch like this with all that sort of uh, all the. Rugby League World Cup stuff all around and it, like the way the competition was ran and the, the way that the, the teams took it seriously I think what we really need now is more teams to take it more seriously and we probably end up with maybe two divisions in, in the future you know so yeah I'm, I'm absolutely delighted with how it sort of finished and particularly that last game which I thought was the closest to a perfect game across the league I've, I've seen like in a long time do you know what I mean I mean there was some really intelligent plays as well because yeah. cross league doesn't only hone yeah. that that sort of individual play mm-hmm. you know and being able to ball handle and stuff yeah. like that it creates that sort of uh, communication skills yeah, and yeah, brings yeah, them yeah. on doesn't it yeah I think that the like just talking from our own point of view like uh, Ireland very early on we, we sort of uh, hit on that uh, Philip O'Connor would be like a, a sort of a, a go-to man and then we play off him and so you know, if you look at some of the play we put, um, you know, particularly in that first game, uh, you know, like Philip Bertram Rapara, he was making half breaks and we were getting around him. And I think that's sort of, the, that's how you win at Cross League. Do you know what I mean? Like you, you have, you, you go to intelligent play, but it also needs a bit of teamwork. And, and that's sort of what, what we did in, in both the, both the, the England games. Uh, I think in the Scotland game, we let it get away from us a little bit uh, and we probably didn't play as intelligent uh, as we probably could have done. Uh, but then, um, you know, we sort of we came good in the end. You yeah, definitely did come good in the end. Yeah. Uh, as I say, uh, a really enjoyable afternoon of entertainment. Yeah. Thanks yeah. for inviting yeah. us along. I, I've really appreciated yeah, it. Yeah, as well. thanks for thanks for coming along. It means a lot for for you to be here. You know, for us to have an actual commentator and, and someone taking it seriously and professionally. And hopefully now, when they see the the, the footage back in the, I think we're, we're showing it in the in the bar tonight, that everyone enjoys what they saw. I certainly hope so. Okay, so that was uh, our immediate reaction, I think, to, to sort of the end of the World Cup uh, on the Friday. Uh, we still had games to play on the Saturday. Uh, what was your feeling overall, Des? Well, I thought it went really well. Uh, I think you can tell in the in our voices, speaking to, to Dave Parkinson, that uh, we were we were very pleased that, that the way everything had gone. Um, and I don't think it could have been any more... Uh, of a success to be honest it was um, you know okay there's a like in, in any game especially a game that's fairly new to people uh, getting everybody to stick fully 100% to the rules isn't isn't easy um, but we I think we got there we, we, we definitely made progress over the weekend um, and it, like it was uh, by the final on the second day I thought like everything was sort of running smoothly. Um, referees were in control. People knew what uh, decisions most of the time were going. Were, the referees were giving. Now, obviously, the referees missed the odd thing, but you know that's 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 in every sport. You know, every, every sport there uh, can get things slightly wrong. But um, yeah, it was uh, like I said. You just listen to our, what we've said today. It was a very successful weekend. Mm-hmm. I think. Um... I suppose that the word that I would sort of use like stress testing, I think, is really that I think the uh, the weekend itself did give Cross League a, a sort of a stress test in that uh, you know it'd been played in localized versions, been played for years now, but now it was a case of bringing a lot of people together with maybe a, a lot of different interpretations and trying to standardize that. And like you said, I think we just got better and better at it. I, I did liken it to uh, I think I was talking to Paul McDermott about this. And if you think of the origins of like soccer, you know, football, uh, yeah. the first the first few games were people kicking a ball from one side of a town to another, and then it got standardized, mm. standardized, standardized. In terms of fixtures, we're probably still at the the sort of town versus town stage because we haven't played that much cross league, um, you know, amongst yeah. that many people. It's yeah. been quite localized, and I suppose we're on our way to the uh, to the sort of 
you know, the standardization and then hopefully to the sort of where we have like continental football and we'd have continental cross league and, you know, and it'll sort of develop like that. Um, yeah. I think, you know, like, I think where we are is, is great. And I, if it, the second day, the Saturday, uh, I thought was, um, there were some great games or some great play in there. Uh, mm. I think I think we, you know, the overall consensus is we need to control the contact, which is something we've always had an eye on because it is, I mean, yeah. like it's limited contact. So the, the limit bit is always going to yeah. be up for debate, isn't it? And it's yeah. just standardising the limits and that's what we need to do. And that's what we're, we're going to set out to do next. Yeah. Um, uh, I think if you look at, uh, like I was watching some old rugby league over the, the weekend, um, some games I'd played in, but also some uh, NRL games. Uh, from like 2003 and things like that and it, you can even see that the, you know the contact is a bit different in some of those games you know in the sort of uh, mid 80s a lot of afters a lot of sort of uh, facials and you know roughing people up in the tackle and you know all that was sort of just allowed mm. and, and referees it had to go it had to you know they drew the line but it was a compared to what it's like now it was a a lot further to the whichever side <laughs> you know it was like they let a lot more go um, yeah, yeah. Than, than they do today uh, so it's uh, you know obviously with our game that being such an integral part of the concept of the game um, getting that level of contact right um, yeah it, it has to be it has to be important to us and obviously we've, we've discussed it haven't we we've sort of looked at sort of uh, redefining some of the terminology and, and just trying to be a bit more precise so that everybody understands um, yeah. the level of contact that is allowed and what has crossed the line. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I, like I said, I don't think it, I don't think it's... Uh, you could get... If you grabbed a player off the street and sort of said, threw him into a, a, a cross-league game and they'd only ever experienced full-contact rugby. Now, has anybody ever only experienced full-contact rugby? You know, when we when lads are going training, when they're you know, it's very seldom that you'd play just full contact all the time. You know, so that somebody's played a bit of touch rugby or a bit of grip or a bit of shot to stop or a, you know, a touch or tag or whatever. Um, so nobody's completely ignorant of the idea that there is a line that you can't cross. Mm. It's just uh, we need to get cross league players. Anybody who wants to play cross league. We want to get them all knowing where the line is and what crosses it and and what's allowed. Yeah, yeah. And I think we'll get there. Like I said, uh, you know, yeah. there was a real positive feeling on the Saturday, and and there was a very positive feeling from us in those recordings. I actually yeah. sounded very different. I thought, and I think I was hyped up. We just uh, won a World I, Cup. I don't know whether it's I don't know whether it's played slightly quicker, but it uh, both our voices sound that little bit higher. I don't know. <laughs> Might be the uh, the theme or something. It was all that. <laughs> it was all that singing and jumping around yeah. that we were doing, probably. I don't yeah. know. But it, yeah. it was a very positive day. I think that, like, I, I know I probably mentioned it in the in the in the interview with Dave, but uh, you know that we, we clicked very well the the squad that we had. And, oh, yeah. uh, and and you know, there's a real there's a real sort of like uh, affinity there. Is that the right word? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. we, yeah. I think we we're both playing the game in the same way, and we and that's probably allowed us to, yeah. to click very well. I think if we had yeah. different opinions when we arrived, it would have been a different story. Um, yeah. But we, we, our ethos, our ethos worked because it was the same yeah. ethos. Uh, yes, yeah, I think you you're right there, and it's that sort of. Uh... I mean, when we when we were sort of warming up, uh, you could see sort of see from that it was like um, we everybody was going to wanted to play the same game. Mm, mm. Yeah, right. the same, like there was there was no sort of big imposition. No, you've got to do this. I want you to do that. It was like, oh, these are some of the things that we use. There's some things that you use. Oh yeah, let's try them. Yeah, work come in. Yeah, they work. You know, like I, mm. I sort of jokingly said it, but I was the sort of uh, the most hands off. Uh, court that uh, I've ever saw as well uh, back in the days in the 80s that most coaches were hands off they left it up to players but you know it, it was like that old school uh, yeah I'm the coach but basically I'm saying well you can do that can you All right, do it you can do that you do that <laughs> you know? mm, it, yeah I think, I think that's, that's a good thing for cross league I think it's good for the, the game because it's sort of uh, 
one of the things that people uh, often complain about with rugby league is that it's it's too choreographed by mm. coaches. You know, that we, we need players to grab the game by the scruff of the neck and, and take over and do something slightly unexpected. Yeah, um, I think um, if you look at the there's parts of the, the first game, where I think we were very fortunate. A lot of things came off for us, so we we were yeah. we didn't really have yeah. to second guess. There was no uh, there's no chance to go to to sort of plan B or no, no need to go to plan B. I suppose I should say no. is that yeah. so. But what we would do is someone would do something, and the whole sideline would go, "Oh, you you can do that. Do that again. Do that again." And yeah. I think that that yeah. that sort of yeah. that became the kind of the thing. And then when there was like I I didn't play in the second game, but when when it the chips were down, if you will. In the Scotland game, because it was quite tight. Yeah, um, it was for a while. Yeah. The uh, they still managed to um, get back to that sort of positivity uh, mm, by not not yeah. panicking, getting the holes of the ball, a little bit of success. I think they they scored probably the best try of the day in that in that second game. Um, yeah, that one that both from what across yeah. one side of the field and then and came then back the other. other. Yeah, yeah, that was yeah. a fantastic try, and you know yeah. things like that. You know that really sticks out in in your mind as a player and a coach, and you start say, "Well, if we can do this, we can do this." You know, for to everyone. You know, I I, I think we were fortunate, but um, because I would say, as an organizer, that that the competition, the way it was, what I was expecting really is that uh, the main sort of like competition would be on Saturday, and that we would be having some international games on the on the Friday. Um, that would maybe set the scene type of thing. Um, yeah. yeah, but it, it sort of became probably a little bit more serious than I expected it to be. Um, right. Mm. Yeah, but then I thought really the stage was set for, um, you know, England to an England Lionhearts team who'd sort of been put together from like the best of the Grand Prix to probably mm. go ahead and sort of like show a bit of class and, and kind of, and maybe win and then you know i think we, we as an ireland team we were probably the last put together like scotland had been together for a couple of years england had been yeah. together at the start of or months before we even sort of knew what our final team was going to be and i think mm. i don't the ethos that we had probably at the beginning was we're gonna have a lot of fun we're gonna play yeah. for ireland yeah. we're gonna sing our anthem we're gonna throw the ball around we might score some great tries we go home happy has to look to yeah. everyone else. Whoever wins wins. Fantastic. But that that took us through then. And that that sort yeah. of that attitude ended up being a winning attitude. And that's probably something brilliant about Cross League. Yeah. You know, yeah. I, mean, I do I do agree with you there. It's uh it's a uh, it's it's good that that sort of having that attitude led to success. Because you know that that's what we sort of want really. It's a, mm-hmm. it's we want people to enjoy the the playing cross league and I, I think even if you know like I watched the um the older owls and their standard of play was really good like they you know and they were guys that you know in a in a full contact game might be doing a lot of the hard work the hard graft or the donkey work uh they they're looking for offloads and they're stringing passes together that you know rather than oh this fella's just gonna take it in you know you had fellas that were looking to to play that bit of that bit of football. Mm. And um, I think that's a that's a big plus, big plus for the game, and it, it makes it more enjoyable. And you know, as I said, lads who might have had years of playing, you know, grafting, um, doing loads of tackles and getting knocked about like all this all day long, um, suddenly to see themselves in an environment where they can uh, do a bit of ball playing and you know set things up for people and score tries themselves. Um, I would have thought that is appealing to him. It, it definitely seemed to be amongst the lads that you know we've seen sort of take to the game recently. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'd like I, I saw them improve for. No, it's not so much improving; it's doing things that maybe they didn't expect to do themselves, isn't it? Like, it, it, yeah. I think you know, it's that sort of like, uh, oh, I, in my previous career, I I took in a lot of ball and I was safe with it, and and I made yards and I pushed people around, and that was what I did. And now it's like, oh well, mm. now. I actually have a little bit more room and I can try a bit more, do it, do a bit of, yeah. use my experience a bit more. And I think that that's sort of, that's what they did. And they had a lot of success in that on the Saturday. Yeah, they were really good. Yeah. Yeah. yeah but I think that's the thing is that to be, it's having that environment where you can try stuff. 
mm. isn't it? You know, yeah. uh, instead of the instead of uh, coaches putting the the handcuffs on you and saying, "No, I only want you to do this," and if you do that, if you get to there and you get a quick feather ball, I'm happy. Just do that two or three times a set, and uh, you're our best player. Mm. But you know, that's not really that's not going to win you cross league games. So you need mm. that sort of. Uh, Bit of extra football, and like I said, that's that's part of the ethos and part of the idea behind the game is to improve skill levels and decision making, and you know that's the sort of environment that we're trying to create with the rules. Mm-hmm. Um, so just uh, looking ahead to this year, um, the I suppose there's a, there's a few things that we'll have to have our AGM in January. I think it's going to be either the last week of January or the second last week of January, where we'll have to. Uh, uh, ratify a few of these of these rules. Um, uh, I think the probably the biggest news team wise is that we're looking to move to Blackpool. We'll have a team in Blackpool. That's going to be yeah. that's exciting for everybody involved because it's a a new area uh, and hopefully a very strong squad and and they can sort of yeah. um, make the uh, make the the Grand Prix a little bit more circular, I suppose. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. And then I think the the biggest change for me personally is this uh, conversion rule. Um, yeah. Uh, so just to sort of explain, when Dave Parkinson was doing the commentary, he was putting everything up in fours, which is mm. appropriate. And then we decided that we accept four as the as the uh, instead of one as the sort of uh, what you get for a try. And now we're looking to maybe use some a conversion rule. Um, where you try and convert your your try with another try, I suppose, uh, for two points, like one one attempt at getting a, a two point conversion. But the uh, I haven't tried it yet. Also, it's not actually been ratified, but we hope that it will be at this AGM. But you have, yeah. So, yeah. What's your thoughts on it? Yeah, we we introduced it there in uh, in Killarney and at uh, on the St Stephen's Day Boxing Day run out. Uh, yeah, and it was uh, at first there was like. Nobody had an idea what they would do with it. Would the would the you know, people were scoring tries, and then you you know you take a bit like a conversion. You you you'd sort of take your tap in line with where you scored the try. So people were going to the centre of the field, thinking that they might sort of overload one side, and then lining up in different arrangements, uh, like four people behind one another at the play of the ball, and just to sort of throw the defence off a bit. But it some 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 failed abysm abysmally but um yeah a couple of times then they got success and I, I was down last week in Killarney and we, we we used the same we used the conversion rule again and um it it didn't it didn't improved which sort of showed that's you know that's you the know. whole idea behind it it was that that one play you know maybe not sort of attacking straight away trying to sort of draw defenders up a little bit things like that um having people cross you know um from one side of the the player to the other to to make an extra person and and we had we had some uh, I I actually used the, uh, the the seventeen point two rule for a while as well so that that's changed the dynamic a little bit in that I could draw the first player go to the next one and get a pass in before they got me on the second one so that you know that again uh, using the rules it just it, it made it uh, it made it work it was uh, yeah I think we got a lot more success this time out of it. And then we had at Christmas. Um, what else would I say about it? Though? It's, uh, well, the, only, the one downside is trying to keep big numbers in your head. <laughs> Fours yeah, and twos. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, in was... no time, it was like, it was sort of, uh, what is it? It was 36, 25, 24. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And yeah. so then what we, I think what we eventually did, we said like, okay, well, we'll start again. And we'll play first to, uh, first to 20, I think, is how yeah. we finished off. Uh, and then part way through as well, we were sort of, uh, we couldn't think what the score was, but we said like, okay, we're, we're 12 up. Okay. So then when they scored, you know, we were only, when they scored and didn't do the conversion, we were six up, you know, yeah. that sort of thing. So it's probably safe to say you're a convert to conversions. Is that, is that yes, appropriate? I am, I am, I, I've been converted <laughs> by the conversion. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's uh, it, it does. It's a, Another aspect of the game, and it, uh, you know, it, it makes things that little bit uh, different. You know that you can, like, 
you know, uh, trying and if somebody's not scoring their conversions, they have to score three tries compared to a team that scores two tries and scores two other tries, basically. Uh, yeah, <laughs> but it's uh, yeah, it's yeah, it's good. I like it. I'd be excited to see what people make of it, but uh, we still yeah. have to talk about it at the at the AGM later this month. Yeah, um, yeah. just uh, the rest of things that that may come up. Uh, Ireland versus Warrington on the twenty ninth of April. That's something. Yeah, there. And, uh, Rich Clancy's done loads of work on that uh, to get sponsors and make it a big uh, a big day, and um, you know, make it a, a good fundraiser for the the charity that he's. Um, I haven't got the name of it to hand, to be honest, but um, it's Rock. Is it St. Rocco's? Uh, I think it might be. Um, uh, yeah, but he's like I say, he's, he's put a lot of work in. You see all the stuff that he's, he's finding sponsors for players and he's the ball. And I know you've been doing some work on the on the jersey as well, haven't you? Yeah, so I think the, the sort of time has come really to, to get a, a sort of a, a nice jersey out there. And I think that the Ireland jersey from the early days and the, the Emerging Nations World Cup. I always thought the yeah. design was really good, but I think that it sort of suits the ethos. I say ethos a lot, don't I? It suits yeah. where we are as an organisation that we're emerging, and I thought that what better yeah, way to sort of symbolise that than to, to go down the path of, of resurrecting that jersey. So we, we have something similar. Uh, it's obviously, it's hard to get exact replicas unless you go back to the same supplier at the time. So things change all the time in uh, in kits and designs, but uh, we're hoping to have something very similar. And yeah. then hope to have that for a few years. Yeah, and it's a V, isn't it? That's right, yeah. yeah. It's technically, I think, the, the, that jersey, it's almost like an inverted V, isn't it? Because you have, there's, a gr- there's green bits that make a white V in the middle. Yeah, but I thought, yeah. But those green bits are sort of triangular shaped. Anyway, it's it's a beautiful jersey, and uh, hopefully the mm. the sort of design when we we have it finalized, people people take to it. Yeah, 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 Very yeah. Good. Um. So then the other thing is obviously we have the Grand Prix again, which uh, yeah. looks like you know it, it's in its second year. People have a fair idea what will happen. Hopefully we'll get to Blackpool. Hopefully we'll have uh, maybe. A few different venues. I think last year we had a couple of repeats. Um, yeah. And then this other idea, which again needs to go past the uh, the AGM, is this this merit league where people can arrange fixtures amongst themselves and get points for those fixtures. But it is more about mixing in. Um, so you know, I think the the idea there is that you play three games, but two of those games are are mixed in with the team that you're visiting. And then right. one one is for the points, and it's really you know they're more like uh, sessions, I suppose, like joint sessions. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. People but, together, and, and if people have sort of less experience of the game, maybe they they learn from those first two games what the you know as we we've talked about already about the um you know what's allowed and what's not allowed, what where the lines drawn when it comes to contact, and then you can have a a sort of a club game then. For the points at the end, which mm. is um, that's what people want, don't they? People like competition. I know I do. It's uh, you know, it's it's something that uh, that's what that's what attracts people into playing sport, really, isn't it? That sort of chance of of winning, really. You know, and whilst yeah, I'm not a, yeah. no way, I'm a I'm a win at all cost type of person. Um, it's like you take your little, you can take your little wins during a game. You know, that's right, um, and I think that you know yeah. it's just a nice feeling to be, you know, come back from three tries down, or you know, um, like blowing a team away because you've everything's come off for you. Not that you're way better than them or anything, but just you've sort of surprised yourselves and them with the yeah. with how everything sort of worked out. And I think that, um, yeah, that you know, that's that probably that attracts any anybody to any sport, doesn't it? But it's certainly yeah. something that we're trying to, uh, you know, um. I get with this with this Parrot League and the, is it and the Grand Prix. The is it part it's, of the ethos? Man? It's, it's part of the ethos, yeah. I, I, <laughs> the reason I went quiet is because the word ethos just filled the room and I couldn't get around it. So I think that, um, yeah, whilst it's not win at all costs, like you say, I think 
there is something great about winning a game and and or coming yeah. back from or, or or making a game of it. Or, and it is good to have it's good to have scores. Mm. Um, and uh, yeah, that hopefully people don't take it too seriously and just enjoy the friendly competition. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So that's and then the other thing I think that probably this year we'll we'll see more of is uh, like standalone events, which were yeah. quite sparse last year. Uh, but I think mm. a lot of that was to do with we're putting a lot of lot of effort into different things. Um, mm. uh, you know, it's probably no secret that we were supposed to go to um, the uh, the St James's Park, and we probably put like ninety percent of all our resources into arranging that um, mm. around that sort of middle of the summer, and it didn't come off yeah. for us, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, we could have used that effort on something else that did come off. That's right. You know, a, a charity event, a standalone competition, you know, spreading mm. it somewhere else. We could have contacted someone, you know, in the likes of sort of Blackpool and, and York and mm. set, yeah. got something there a bit sooner. Um, but yeah. yeah, I think, um, you know, that's, we're, there's there's more people involved now and there's probably, uh, there's more people that can take things on. I think that's going to help, help us spread this yeah. year. Yeah, really good. Yeah, so that's um that's what's ahead of us. I just wanted to ask you about your Christmas. Um, what was it like? Well, it was it was nice and quiet to be honest. Didn't do a lot. The weather wasn't great over here. Um, but um, yeah, I do sort of thinking back. How Christmases used to be a busy period when I was playing. You know, obviously back back in those days we were playing um the winter season and it used to be um boxing day st stephen's day and uh, new year's day were two big um two big games every year you know yeah i think i I spoke to you a little bit about this before but the um did that sort of ruin your christmas yes absolutely (laughs) (laughs) because you had to be ready to play the next day of of christmas day well Um, we wouldn't. We. I don't think I ever remember playing uh, training on Christmas Day. Mm. Um. But I. You know. But we would. Obviously, we we're playing on. Like you, you can't. You couldn't go mad on the drink and the, the food on Christmas Day itself because um, you were playing mm. on, on Boxing Day. You know. So I know that, that, that I have one recollection where. I did polish off a trifle and I thought, oh God, I must be like absolutely full here. <laughs> I hope it burns off overnight because I've got to play the next day. Oh, um, yeah. When would that have been? Uh, I just, actually, my, it's mid 80s, so I don't know. Um, I, I was looking on the, the Oldham Heritage Trust mm-hmm. for how many times I did actually play it around uh, Christmas. And there's a few, but there's. You know, it's not. It's hardly sort of uh, twenty years of, uh, of. No, no. Yeah, but it's it's uh, enough. So I just I'm ju- I just have that site on the. Uh, yeah. The eighty six. The first season I was at Oldham in eighty three. Eighty three. Let me let me go back. I didn't. That. I uh I didn't. That see, I've been on I've been on loan at Oldham until the end of October. And then when witness called me back, I sort of said, well, I'm not going back. So uh, there was discussions then about me actually transferring. So I act, I think it was uh, New Year's Day that I sort of signed the deal to to go to Oldham and, um, and played then on the third against Leeds away. Oh, right, right. Oh, so yeah. just looking at that, you, didn't, you played on Halloween and then you played on the 3rd of January. Yeah. Yeah. So you had a bit of time. Did you go back and play for Witness? No. Or you just didn't no, bother going I, back? I, oh, okay. I thought it said, yeah, I, I, I think there's an article somewhere in, from some paper where I saw it say, uh, I'm not, you know, and they, they'd called me back because they must have got a few injuries and what have you. And uh, I just said, well, I don't want to go back. So I was trying to put a bit of pressure on Oldham really to sign me, I suppose. Mm. You know. but so that couldn't have been the year of the trifle because you had that wasn't, you had no that wasn't, December yeah. off then. <laughs> yes so uh, so what year could it be so the next 
what we got the following year was December twenty sixth at home to Salford. Uh, it could have been it could have been then, I suppose. I don't know. Eighty three that was. Eighty three. And then again we played Leeds. Well, funny that like Leeds became our sort of. Uh, uh, I mean, what, they're normally derbies, aren't they? At those times. Uh, yeah, so you play Salford. Most of the time, yeah. So, so, yeah. So, our own game was against Salford, but our away game on Stevens on on New Year's Day was against Leeds. Mm. Yeah, so, just looking at eighty three, it's the twenty sixth and then the second. Yeah, yeah. And then um, the eight. That's not as bad. I did see one that's pretty bad. Like the games are very close together. On Springfield Barra, yeah, Springfield Barra. No, no, that's yeah. not what I'm. I'm it's the twenty first, the twenty sixth, the first and the fourth. Yeah, Jesus, that's a busy period, isn't it? And that's yeah. Saint Helen, Salford, Leeds, and Hull. <laughs> yeah, did we win any of them? Three of them are away. I'll tell you if we won any. <laughs> this might have been the trifle year. It's eighty six. Could have been. It could have been. See, lost to, well, lost to Saint Helen's twenty eight six. That's on the twenty first. That's that's pre Christmas, but in the the week leading up, then it then Salford's your Boxing Day game won that. Yeah, uh, thirty four eighteen. Mm. I think there's video of that, and I think it's, I don't know if I scored one. I scored a couple in that one. Against it Salford. says you scored one there, mm. and then. Then one against Leeds, 26 mm. 20. Yeah, on a roll. Yeah, I think I did those Leeds ones actually, we did quite well. I think we, we lost one, we drew one, and we won a couple of them. And then lost the whole by a try. Oof, mm. you scored in that one though. Don't remember it. Absolutely. There was a try list to pull back. Um, what date was that? That would have been the 4th of January, 1987. Mm-hmm. There was Paul Sherman, on, you and Gary Bridge in the centre, and um, Mike Taylor on the other wing, Topless and Ashton at 6 and 7. Who's the trialist, I wonder? Um, I can't remember. We did have a couple. We had a couple around that time. We can't, you know, they were rugby union people, so they uh, they couldn't have their name on the sheet. Yeah, they were getting banned. The interesting yeah. thing about rugby union, um, I was, I've been playing a lot of that, you know, rugby coach, the the Amiga game, uh, yes. which is sort of set around ninety one, and uh, the rugby union is split into three divisions. So I just went to see like what was happening in rugby union at that time. And they had only started having a league structure in, uh, I think, 1987. Yeah. And yeah. and that first league, that first year of that league, the uh, there was no fixture list. And the clubs um, arranged the fixtures themselves and then just said what counted towards the league. Wow. Yeah. Well, I think that that had been their thing, though, hadn't it? They'd... That's one of the reasons why rugby league, I think, took on the uh, the word league mm. because it was it, it was going to be league fixtures where you rather than traditional fixtures between clubs because I think that pre that previously been the norm, right? They just arrange you know some locals and some whatever connections you might have with some other place or some university or old boys and all that sort of stuff. That was the that was the way it went, but like league was. Rugby league became uh, structured as a league. That's why they, they use that word. Mm, that, it's it's kind of interesting. The other thing is that they seem to play hardly any games. So, like, if mm. you'd be playing, what, 28 games a year? And they'd be well, playing, be. like, 11 yeah. or 12. You said 28 games a year. I'm pretty sure that uh, one of the first years I was at Oldham, maybe the second full season I was there, um, I think I played in all 34 games. Oh, yeah, because there would have been um, cup games as well, because you have yeah. two cups. So yeah. well, just going back to the, that reunion thing again, they they um, 
played, I was just reading that article, they played 11 games, but some teams only decided to play 10. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they were Weird. like, 10's enough for us. Let's just have 10. <laughs> that's so, I find that bizarre. But I think then the other thing, um, every every yeah, every second game, I suppose, is an opportunity at taking some money for the gate, isn't it? And maybe if you're not so bothered about that, you don't you not you, you don't care whether you play ten or eleven games, whereas rugby league clubs need every single match they can put on if yeah. that's how they're making the money that pays the players that keeps the club afloat. I mean yeah. I, I don't know like the economics of it, but it doesn't sound like like just looking at the attendances so there's mm. like a, a, this Leeds game, which would have been in Leeds, I suppose, like seven thousand. That's it. Mm. Um, yeah, like does that equate to enough money to run the club when you have a staff, mm. all them players, and an A team, and like it obviously did. Well, they must have done, I suppose. Uh, yeah. Until you start know, playing, paying people too 7, much. Look at some of this. Look at some of the attendances uh, in Super League now. They, they don't get near 7,000. You know, some um, do. Like uh, Leeds at home would usually get, you know, over, you know, 10 or 12, wouldn't they, at least? Mm. Uh, big games at Wigan, Saints going well. The home games there. But like Salford, Salford are like terrible, terribly badly attended, aren't they, really? In the Salford game, in the Salford game that you played in in eighty three, which might that might have been the trifle, the that was three thousand nine hundred seventy five, and that's had all them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not not great, but I like you know they they didn't have to they didn't the thing is they only had to pay us for playing you know they didn't have to pay um, week in week out. Yeah. Money, like, yeah. Mm. So. so that is maybe different. Back in those days, it did make a big difference what your attendances were like. I know we there's one sort of a plan at Oldham where we were we were actually on a bonus for attendances, I think, in that uh when we were in the second division. Um, ninety eight one or something like that. Where we you and, know, we were playing some good stuff and entertaining and stuff and um got decent crowds. And because of that, they would have sort of offered a bonus to if there was more than so many, we got extra money. Wouldn't be a keep, lot, but keep the crowds coming in. So, did you fancy doing a bit of like a halftime show, doing some juggling? <laughs> no, maybe yeah, attract a different yeah. type of crowd by yeah, having some, like a poetry reading at halftime that might bring in an extra there was a few poetry reading group around all of them at that time. I think. <laughs> we missed out on that. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So, so, do you remember? Um. Like after the Christmases, the sort of manic Christmases were over. Like when you sort of retired, or like thinking, oh, I can enjoy Christmas this year. Uh. Yeah. It's uh. You know, obviously, I've sort of been doing that since I was like sixteen, seventeen. You know, mm-hmm. I think I, I might play for Whitney so I was at least in the squad one New Year's Day before I, before I went to all them. So it had always been a, you know, I'd had that from being 16 to being like nearly 30, sort of thing. It was, uh, every Christmas was a busy period, a bit like Easter. You know, that like a lot of Super League ref, uh, a lot of Super League coaches nowadays complain, don't they, about the too many games, uh, Good Friday, Easter, Monday. Mm. Yeah, that's that's a, you know that was. But did you have that as well, because of the way yeah. the season was? Oh, yeah, right. That's interesting, isn't it? <laughs> and also, sometimes you know you had that sort of back end of the season where because a lot of grounds froze in the winter and games got called off. Uh, I think we had a couple of seasons where we were playing like Sunday, Wednesday, Sunday, Wednesday, you know, for about three, three, four weeks, like. Tended to be after Christmas. February is a terrible month for snow, isn't it? It can be, can it? Yeah, yeah. It's not really a Christmas thing. No, no. Mm-hmm. Even though the first of February is technically spring in Ireland, yeah. isn't that right? 
Well, yeah, people do say that. Uh, yeah. There's a lot of meteorologists who would say, well, no, it's not really, it's not till. <laughs> Right. Yeah, I think it's uh, I, I think it's a observable fact that it is not the start of spring. <laughs> no, no. It's it coincides with Saint Bridget's Day, isn't that the yeah, that's sort of why? Yeah, but it is where you you know you're starting to come out. Of the, the days are getting longer and all that. You're starting to come out of winter in as much as a bit more daylight, even if you've still got the leftover of uh, potential cold weather. Mm. Yeah, so that's that's Christmas covered off. Yeah, it was it was always a busy period, and it was that time of year where you tended to sort of. Uh, I know there was one year we were at top of the league at Christmas. Was that the year we got relegated? Oh really? Yeah, and he's fourth from bottom. Oof. Yeah, and we just had a big spell there of nowhere to train, and to train indoors. And oh right, and, right. So there could have been snow that year. Well, it's more frost oh, is the main problem, and that, that was always a problem at Oldham. You know, yeah. um, one of the highest pitches in the world, I think, um, and prone to cold weather. Yeah. Mm. Mm. You prefer Fossa on a Saint Stephen's Day? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a better yeah. surface, I'd imagine. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, that you know, that was the thing often. Uh, particular training in the evening you know, once it sort of went dark um the pitch would start getting crunchy you know you'd hear the sort of like because we were in studs training on it and after a while it could be it could become a bit dangerous um, yeah yeah the kicked in like, yeah. Mm. but yeah the artificial surface surfaces i know that people complain about them ripping their knees to shreds and their elbows and what have you but uh, they certainly than... work better in the winter months, don't they? Like they're a bit of a godsend yeah. then. Maybe less so in the summer. Yeah, yeah, it can get a bit hot in the summer as well. Mm-hmm. Retain that, that rubber so retains the heat. Yeah. Okay. Well, we're going to leave it there. So. Uh, okay. Thanks for thanks for the chat. I'll have mm-hmm. to edit this together now, and hopefully, we'll see you next month. Um, yeah. St. Bridget's Day. <laughs> 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 yeah. the start of the spring yeah. season <laughs> <laughs> cheers good night okay cheers Bye.